In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And, and with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, friends, hearty welcome to the Eucharist. Religious sisters, uh, today is the feast of St. Maximilian Kolbe. Uh, a happy feast to all in Poland. Uh, if any of you are watching this Mass, happy feast to you. It's a great day for each one of you as we uh, celebrate the feast and think of the, your great almost patron saint. Uh, we, I want to want you today to pray because we had uh, Claire recently, now here again at the Franciscan Conventual, Maximilian Kolbe. Pray for all the Franciscans. Uh, he was a member of that. And pray also, at this moment we pray for all the persecuted people, people who are persecuted because of beliefs, because of religion. Uh, that's what uh, Maximilian Kolbe was martyred because of this. We begin the sacrifice putting ourselves in God's presence and asking his forgiveness for our sins. As we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have grievously sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, may he forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who filled the priest and martyr, Saint Maximilian Kolbe, with a burning love for the Immaculate Virgin Mary and with zeal for souls and love of neighbor, graciously grant through his intercession that striving for your glory by eagerly serving others may be conformed even until death to your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please sit. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord was addressed to me as follows. Son of man, confront Jerusalem with her filthy crimes. Say, the Lord says this, by origin and birth, you belong to the land of Canaan. Your father was an Amorite and your mother a Hittite. At birth, the very day you were born, there was no one to cut your navel string or wash you in cleansing water, or rub you with salt, or wrap you up in napkins. No one leaned kindly over you to do anything like that for you. You were exposed in the open fields. You were as unloved as on that day that you were born. I saw you struggling in your blood as I was passing, and I said to you, as you lay in your blood, live and grow like the grass of the fields. You developed, you grew, you reached marriageable age. Your breasts and your hair both grew, but you were quite naked. Then I saw you as I was passing. Your time had come, the time for love. I spread part of my cloak over you and covered your nakedness. I bound myself by oath I made a covenant with you. It is the Lord who speaks, and you became mine. I bathed you in water. I washed the blood of you. I anointed you with oil. I gave you embroidered dresses, fine leather shoes, a linen headband, and a cloak of silk. I loaded you with jewels, gave you bracelets for your wrists, and a ne necklace for your throat. I gave you nose ring and earrings. I put a beautiful diadem on your head. You are loaded with gold and silver and dressed in fine linen and embroidered silks. Your food was the finest flour, honey and oil. You grew more and more beautiful. 
and you rose to be queen. The flame of your beauty spread through the nations since it was perfect, because I had clothed you with my own splendor. It is the Lord who speaks. You have been infatuated with your own beauty, and you used your fame to make yourself a prostitute. You have offered your services to all comers. But I will remember the covenant that I made with you when you were a girl, and I will conclude a covenant with you that will last forever. So remember and be covered with shame, and in your confusion be reduced to silence when I have pardoned you for all that you have done. It is the Lord who speaks. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our response to God's word. Your anger has passed, O Lord, and you give me comfort. Together, your anger has passed, O Lord, and you give me comfort. Truly, God is my salvation. I trust, I shall not fear. For the Lord is my strength, my song. He became my savior. Response, your anger has passed, O Lord, and you give me comfort. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, give praise to his name. Make his mighty deeds known to the peoples. Response, your anger has passed, O Lord, and you give me comfort. Declare the greatness of his name, sing a psalm to the Lord. For he has done glorious deeds, make them known to all the earth. People of Zion, sing and shout for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Response, your anger has passed, O Lord, and you give me comfort. Kindly stand as we prepare to receive Jesus in the Gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. Your precepts, O Lord, are all of them sure. They stand firm forever and ever. Alleluia. Together. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Pharisees came up to Jesus and tested him by asking, Is it lawful to divorce one's wife for any cause? He answered, Have you not read? that he who made them from the beginning made them male and female, and said, for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one. So they are no longer two, but one. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. They said to him, Why then did Moses command one to give a certificate of divorce and to put her away? And Jesus said to them, For your hardness of heart, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except for unchastity, and marries another, commits adultery. And he who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. The disciples said to him, If such is the case of a man with his wife, it is not expedient to marry. But he said to them, Not all men can receive this precept, but only those to whom it is given. There are eunuchs who have been so from birth, and there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by men. And there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. He who is able to receive this, let him receive this. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Friends and sisters and brothers, the first reading from Ezekiel, it's still the first part, as I mentioned to you uh, yesterday and day before, where Ezekiel is continuing to chastise Israel for its infidelity. Because they have, God has been faithful to them, but they have not been faithful to God. And all this, what the prophet said, I remind you all what the prophet said. Uh, Amos, Isaiah, Jeremiah, now Ezekiel, they have been dispersed, they are going to be weak, they are going to be confused, and then gradually as they hear and read, because these were kept as sacred writings, they read what the prophet said, they realize that they were warned about this, this was foretold, and this helps them to form unity, strengthens them, in, strengthens them in distress, and God now, when we come to the second part of Ezekiel, you'll see God is encouraging them, there is hope, it will come back, and that gives them a great strength. And that then is the role of the prophet, warn them, but also bring them to repentance. The Gospel of today, Matthew 19, uh, is often quoted because uh, this is the whole uh, gospel on about marriage becoming indissoluble. It's uh, all those who study theology, marriage, canon law, have got to analyze this uh, chapter and Jesus speaking uh, about the indissolubility of marriage. You can't put away your spouse. Uh, Jesus' friends, and I don't want to I, I don't think this is really for you, all of you I know are in good marriages and uh, you want to come closer to the Lord. I want to tell you why Jesus spoke about this. It's, he's consistently, we saw that in the, of, in the Beatitudes, we saw that in all his teachings, he has consistently gone deeper into what the Old Testament taught. Consistently got a real greater discipleship greater approach to perfection, greater uh, adherence to the will of God. He says, for the hardness of heart, there were some exceptions made, you could divorce, but now you can't. Except for, the word here is un unchastity, but they're different, this is the English word, the word in Greek was porneia, another word in the Hebrew, and uh, uh, without getting into all the technicalities, uh, generally it is because the marriage was against the laws in the Old Testament. So that marriage which you, you got into uh, against the laws of the Old Testament were in, in fact, when I think of it, uh, they were against the laws of God and therefore in the Jewish tradition they would consider them as uh, invalid marriages. You, you got into a wrong marriage, you should not have got to. Something uh, not the same, something like what we have now in the Catholic Church of impediments. And if somebody gets married uh, without this impediment being dispensed from by the bishop, that marriage is invalid and would be declared invalid. And, and either you rectify the marriage or get married uh, and get married again. Something similar over here, but Jesus, and, and this has been commented on. The different churches have taken different lines. But the, as you know, in the Catholic Church, there is no divorce at all. We don't recognize divorce but right enough because Jesus, that's the mind of Jesus that you can't put away your spouse. And all I want to say in this uh, communication to you, in this gospel reflection, to any of you is uh, in a marriage that is difficult. I was for a very long time uh, in the marriage tribunal and I dealt with uh, thousands of cases surely of broken marriages and uh, I want to tell you that a spiritual solution is possible. So any of you listening now uh, has got a problem, marriage, please approach, approach your, I'm not saying if you're happy, please stay on. And if, if it's difficulties are there in every marriage. But if you're not in a good marriage, please approach your tribunal and the tribunal will 
surely uh, try to help you. Uh, Pope Francis, conscious that this is a big problem in society today, had two synods on family. And he, at the end of it, uh, after our discussions, we felt that uh, one of the problems was the, the tribunals were taking a little too long uh, to solve marriage problems. And therefore, he speeded up the process. He gave uh, different uh, directions on how we can uh, give relief better. Because it's, uh, your family, your marriage is the most important uh, element in your life for your happiness. So I, I once again appeal to all of you, wherever you are in the world, uh, that uh, if you have a problem in your marriage, please approach your uh, courier your tribunal and meet the person, priest in charge there or the, can, the canonist in charge and see how this could be. Uh, my own experience I want to share with you that I, I was able to find a solution uh, to most of the people who approach me. So uh, it's, it's not that uh, uh, most of the cases are insoluble. Generally when you, you are all good people and if there's a problem, the, the solution is possible. But I want to briefly reflect on the saint of today, our popular saint, Maximilian Kolbe. He was born in 1894, and uh, he came from a poor family, Maximilian. His name was Raymond, really, not Maximilian, Raymond. And uh, mischievous, adamant, stubborn, and his parents were poor. They were weavers, I believe. And uh, they found, uh, uh, but mother was irritated with him. And uh, one day the mother, his mother in exasperation, he was only 10 years old, and she told him, my son, what will become of you? Like many mothers now must be saying and fathers must be saying. And uh, mother said, and he also writes, that one remark, is, can my parents over here see how it can make an impact, train, change your life completely, that incident. She said, the mother said, that after that incident, uh, he often would run to the, in the corner of the house, there was a statue of Our Lady of Czestokowa, Our Lady from Poland. That's a shrine there, a little out of uh, uh, Warsaw. And, and they were, I, I, I've been there myself. Lots, of, lots, lots and lots of pilgrims come there to pray to Our Lady. And uh, he would go there and pray the statue of Our Lady. And uh, that she, she noticed that when he would come back, he, his eyes were red. He would often be crying. And afterwards, later in life, he revealed that that shocked him a bit when his mother said, what will become of you? So he went, and then he says, he went to Our Lady. She's very, very, very popular there. Uh, everybody uh, goes there, even the president, the prime minister, the pope went there, uh, Pope John Paul, Pope Benedict. Uh, and, and, and so... Uh, he said that one day when he was praying and praying and to make him a good boy to help him, uh, he said he saw a vision of Our Lady and uh, as he was praying to make, she had uh, in his vision he saw her having two crowns, a white and a red crown. And she asked him, he felt, uh, which do you want? And child that he was, he said, I want both. And he says that the vision disappeared. But it never it made a deep impact on him. And after that, he had great devotion to Our Lady. Even in the collect, we have mentioned that he devotion to Immaculate Heart of Mary. Yeah, he had a great devotion to Our Lady. And uh, then he it, ne it never left him, this uh, vision which he had. He decided to become a priest. He joined the conventual, the Franciscans. And then he went, he into Rome for his studies, he did his philosophy, and came back, he went to Japan as a missionary, uh, and then finally went, finally he came back, and great passion uh, really to bring people to, through Mary, to Jesus, through Mary, that, that was uh, his great passion. He formed a group of people, lay people, priests, uh, who would work as he called them, Knights of the Immaculate. Uh, much of it was uh, trying to reform, we find in his writings, uh, lots of writings of how to reform religious life, how to lead people to come closer to the Lord, how to get people to imitate Our Lady and through Our Lady come to That's you find in his re uh, writings. Uh, but then uh, he 
passionately wanted to work uh, for all people. And then he got, the Nazi regime came in Germany and he was arrested. Relief, uh, he was released, but again he was re-arrested because he was helping the Jews who, uh, who were being persecuted by uh, the Nazi regime. And he was put in the concentration camp at Auschwitz. And there he, uh, hard labor, ill-treated, and uh, he, he was a Catholic priest, so he was not treated like the Jews, but, didn't, but then he gave a lot of consolation. He would uh, listen to people, counsel them, hear their confessions, and uh, continuously leading people close to the Lord, strengthening them, helping them in their faith, not to give up their faith and to keep up their faith. And uh, what is most known about him is what led finally to his death. He was a prisoner, I think they said prisoner number 16670. And that was the uh, famous number of the, this prisoner, uh, Maximilian Kolbe. He was Raymond, I said. When he became a uh, conventual, he took the good Maximilian. And because of his devotion to Our Lady, when he took his final vows, he took also the word, the name Maria, Mary. So Maximilian Mary Kolbe, that's really his full name. And I was saying that he was in, the, in jail over there, and uh, one day, it was 24th of uh, July, uh, and 41, and, and uh, some prisoner escaped from the camp. And the rule was, if one prisoner escapes, a number of them have got to be to give the penalty for that one. They didn't find that person who escaped. And the commandant said, 10 prisoners have got to die from this camp. So they were lined up and 10 were chosen. And they were being marched away. They were condemned to death by starvation. All 10 people to make up for that one person who had done. And as they were being marched, one man, Francisco, uh, he been crying out aloud, not me, God, not me, Lord, not me, Lord. Uh, my poor children, my poor wife, I'll never see them. They'll never see me again. And he was crying. Maximilian's heart was moved. His sense of charity, spiritual life was uh, and living. And he marched up to the commandant and told him, I'm a Catholic priest. And... Uh, let him go, I'll take his place. And they say, uncharacteristically, they would not allow that. The commandant said, okay, you go back. And so that's how Maximilian went uh, to his death. He was imprisoned for starvation. And then one by one, they died. And finally, on the, today, 14th of August in 41, the commandant, they were, because 24th of July, they were already in, so it was already two weeks, over two weeks, almost three weeks that they were there. And there was uh, six of them, I think, had already died of starvation. There were three who were unconscious. Maximilian was the only one still surviving, weak but surviving. Prayer, spirituality, and uh, he was praying over the three who were unconscious. And the commandant said, uh, uh, give an injection. and." Uh, don't waste time. Uh, so the other three died. And then the doctor came to give him an injection of uh, poison, cyanide probably. And uh, they say that when he, uh, he just put his hand calmly out, received the injection. And on the 14th of August, uh, 41, 1941, he was executed. He, before that, he was in Auschwitz for a long, for three, four years. And uh, what they re were remarkable when they, Finally, uh, when they went to take away his body, one of the prisoners asked to take his body. They found him sitting, still in prayer, eyes open. But they said his face was so peaceful, uh, focused on a particular point. So uh, you speculate that perhaps he had a vision of Our Lady again at that last moment. We don't know. But uh, it was very, very peaceful. There was no sign of any suffering. Eyes open, looking at a point, and then took his body away. Maximilian Kolbe is an example to us, really, of uh, 
self-sacrifice, dedication. This last incident is known so much that when he was canonized, the person he uh, died for was present, Francisco. And Pope John Paul, I think it was, who said he gave his life for his brother, he gave his life for Christ. And that was Maximilian Kolbe. Life did not mean much to him. Discipleship of Jesus was more important. Today is a great day for Poland, a great day for all who sacrifice themselves for other. And uh, I want you to pray, all of us pray to Maximilian Kolbe to make us like him. Dedicated, generous, unafraid in the face of difficulties. Following Jesus, his gospel, because we know Jesus is always with us. St. Maximilian Kolbe, pray for us. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To your goodness we have this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in his divinity who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, to your goodness with the spine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to be pleased. Receive this sacrifice which we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We present our oblations to you, O Lord, humbly praying that we may learn from the example of Saint Maximilian to offer our very lives to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right and just. Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyr, Maximilian, poured out like Christ's to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness to Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth. Before your majesty without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted. He took bread and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we merit to be quest to eternal life, praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, to you, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence in the Father, in the words Jesus taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. In your mercy keep us free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait with joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant the peace and unity, the accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Let us offer you the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. The only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
we now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your divine will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that renewed by the body and blood of your Son, we may be inflamed with the same fire of charity that Saint Maximilian received from this holy banquet. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass ended. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. God bless you. And uh, tomorrow is the Feast of Our Lady. Uh, happy Feast already anticipation. And uh, so tomorrow we'll have uh, the Assumption, and I try to get somebody from the Assumption congregation. But on Sunday is Justice Sunday. And uh, so already today, uh, the Justice and Peace Commission of the Archdiocese of Bombay will give a little catechesis on what justice means, what peace means, and the works of this commission. God bless you. Have a lovely day. God bless you. Keep well. We pray now for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere. Hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. All I ask of you is for Forever